Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be discussing why I always prefer to pay for things in cash. Yes, I prefer to pay in cash and if possible to pay in entirety as opposed to utilizing any financing mechanisms out there. And this is so because most of the financial mechanisms out there, whether it is higher purchase payment terms, or even air terms out there around Kulipa Mdogo Mdogo are actually bound to cost you a lot, a lot more in the long term. And that's so because the geniuses behind these financial models out there and financing offerings out there understand that they are actually riding on the wave of people pursuing different freedoms out there. And as human nature, there are instinctly three freedoms which all of us out there desire for. Talk about financial freedom. Talk about place freedom. Talk about time freedom. Right? So they understand you don't have a lot of money. They understand you are in pursuit of time freedom. They understand you are in pursuit of place freedom. So what are they going to do? They're going to sell you an illusion of time freedom or even an experience of a place freedom and then you're going to pay handsomely for it using financial freedom. That's exactly what happens with most of the higher purchase or even in other terms around paying for things slowly out there. They're going to give you things, but you're going to pay for them over time. In essence, you utilizing that illusion of time freedom and you're going to end up paying for them handsomely. That's why... I always prefer to pay for things out there in cash at every opportunity I get. You might be wondering, why is this the case and why is this important? I'm also going to discuss with you five solid reasons as to why this is important and actually in the long term it is detrimental for your passage to financial freedom as you're going to see in this video. You are all much welcomed to the Money Daily YouTube channel. My name is Afaga Sifuna. By the way, if it is your first time here, kindly consider subscribing to this channel for you to be getting awesome videos each and every time. So, I'm going to be referring to my notes to discuss with you these key pointers. And of course, the very first reason as to why it is detrimental for you in the long term is that in case you accept payment models out there which are going to cost you more and it's going to take you time to pay, the very first reason is that, first of all, you're going to buy these things expensively. Of course, it isn't coming for free. You're going to actually pay a higher cost for you to buy time, for you to pay for a longer time, right? So, the longer you take, most of the times, the higher the amount of price you're going to pay for you to acquire anything. And even most of the times, you can't even find, for example, you taking one year to, buy, to pay for something, it might even cost you more than more than 150 percent of the initial price so you need to be very careful so as not to buy the illusion of time freedom and then you end up sacrificing your financial freedom right related to that the second reason as to why it can also be detrimental is that is because by you actually accepting pay for something over a longer duration of time and actually paying at a higher cost you are in essence curtailing other opportunities. In other words, the opportunity cost you are foregoing, which you could have used either at the more current point in time or even in future to do other alternative investments out there. Think about it. You can purchase for something, for example, but even pay 120% more. You know, payment, for example, at a cost of 150%. You'll end up paying more. That's the fact. Yet, this more money you're paying you could alternatively have used, for example, to invest in the stock market, right? Invest, for example, in REITs, you know, put the money, for example, in business and so forth. So I think we need to be very cautious with regards to how we're accepting these terms out there so that in the long term it isn't detrimental to our financial goals. Okay? And then the third reason as to why I'm cautious about this kind of payment mechanisms is because actually it is also kind of overwhelming. To your mental well-being think about it you for example have purchased a car terms of you paying 
month, 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 slow by slow. In essence, higher purchase terms. Woe unto you because that particular logbook, right? Or even think about it, house, mortgage. That particular logbook won't really come to you upfront. It won't be transferred to you upfront. You're going to have to pay for the entire payment installments. And then at the very end is when you're going to get transfer of ownership to you after going through that pain for those many months, going through that worry for those many months. In other words, the mental, mental well-being is quite important too. But you find times out here, people are moving with worry because of the time they have accepted with regards to payment, whether it is their car, whether it is their house, or any other thing out there they have purchased. And all these causes a lot of worry to people, which I think is actually even a higher cost than new alternative deciding to pay for it once and for all and in cash, right? And then the fourth key risk, which actually I'm very cautious about, is that in case you're purchasing a huge asset, which is a high value asset, using those kind of terms, you might just end up losing your whole investment. Talk about the deposit you put down. Talk about the instrument you're going to have paid to debt. In case, for example, you default, you might just end up losing your initial investment. And this is so because these kind of contracts are drafted, are drafted with the seller having a higher, higher or an upper hand. In other words, default, that particular direction, the, 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 the decision on how it's going is going to be determined by the seller solely. You'll actually forfeiting your freedom of deciding on whether you want the asset to be sold or not. In case you default, it's going to be sold whether you like it or not. And that's why we see, for example, perusing through the dailies regularly, you see hundreds of vehicles being sold out there each and every week through auction, right? You see houses out there put on auction and so forth. All this is because of people defaulting. And then they end up losing lots and lots of value or even lots of money they put in this upfront. And then the last and the fifth thing I want to discuss is that in case someone buys something using this kind of installments, they're actually curtailing their ability to negotiate. And I'm saying so because most of the times you're given this option or this option. In case you're buying in cash, you have the alternatives of you actually negotiating for the price. But they're going to tell you if you buy in cash, this is the amount. But if you buy in installments, this is the amount. And also, this are going to be the instruments for a given duration of time. And most of the times, you can't negotiate while you're buying something on installments. This is all because it looks like a favor. But the reality is that actually the seller is squeezing the maximum possible dollars out of you because you're going to pay for it to the last coin as opposed to you bargaining in case you're purchasing in cash. Why do you think? Do you like purchasing things on higher purchase or do you prefer to purchase things in its entirety and also purchasing things out there by paying using cash method? I like to purchase things out there in entirety and actually purchase using cash as much as possible. What do you think? The person that will be in the comment section, let's continue discussing down there. Cheers and you all. Take care.